Let's worship. Yes, Lord Jesus. together and give God your best praise. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> shout it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Glory, glory, and honor. Majesty, power, might, and dominion belongs to our God. Can you shout a good amen? Can you do it again? Say amen, somebody. <laughs> Praise God. You may be seated. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is a good God. He is high and lifted up. Let his train fill this temple. Ah, such a wonderful time to be in the presence of the Lord. David said, I was glad. How many of you have been glad when you... <laughs> <laughs> How many of you were glad when you heard that you need to be in the house of the Lord this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe, I believe when David said that, he knew that when he got there, the presence of God would be there. Because he knew that God's presence show up when two people are gathered. At least two. Thank God there's at least two of us here this morning. We, we qualify for his presence. Amen. I say, isn't it good to be in God's presence? It's easy. <laughs> it's easy to worship when you're among other believers. But you got to take the worship outside. Take it to your house, in your car, in the marketplace, in the grocery store. And you don't, you don't have to act religious, just be worshipful. You know when the Bible says pray always, it doesn't mean that you're on your knees all day long. It means that you stay in, an, in, a, in a posture and an atmosphere of prayer. And prayer, worship is a form of prayer. Praise is a form of prayer. Because prayer is simply communicating with God. And it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. So that when you talk to God, He talks to you. Some people might say, hey, you're crazy because you said, I heard God say. <laughs> Amen. When the Lord does talk to his people. Because he's father. And father speaks to his children. Are you blessed this morning? I said, are you blessed this morning? Say, I'm blessed. And I'm highly favored. Now you say it with conviction like you really believe it. Like you mean it. I'm blessed. And I'm highly favored. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Well, I've been, I've got so, I've got some announcements to make, but we'll just wait until after, after the message this morning. But first, I want to say thank you for those that are tuning in. We've been, we've been attempting to go live, and we have done so at the late hour, but now we're going to switch around our time and make sure that those that are tuned in at 10 o'clock there, tune in with us to worship with us and to hear the word of the Lord. So we welcome those that have joined us, uh, Facebook Live and all the other platforms. Would you put your hands together? Let's welcome them and say thank you for joining us. We also know that every service is archived, so you can go back and look at it and receive the word. Last week, we, we, te- we started to teach on the subject of uh, uh, soldiers of the cross, that we are soldiers of the cross. And, uh, and you can go back and listen to it because you're going to need to in order to catch up with where we're going this morning. See, God wants us to be, to be not just alive, but alive and well. You know, the Bible says that it is him that work in us. I said it is him that work in us, both to will and to do what's good pleasure to him. That means... He's working in us the will to do what pleases him. If you're struggling, if you're struggling to find out how do you please the Lord. Now we know without faith is impossible, which means everything you do, you have to do it by faith. If you intend to please God. You just gave tithes and offerings, you have to do that by faith. You can't do it out of a ritual or a religious act, but you do it by faith. And by faith means you're standing on what God says will happen when you give your tithes and your offerings. Amen? Amen. So when when we sow, we're sowing believing. When you worship, you worship believing that God hears your prayers and your worship. Amen? It's important to know that. Because whether you're praising or whether you're worshiping, that's a form of prayer. We're communicating with God. How many know this is, a, this is so needed in the hour in which we live? Because if you want to know what your future looks like, you must ask him who knows your future. God knows more about your future than you even know about your past. Because he's already there. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just go into the scriptures. Let's go back just for a few moments, and let's go back to the gospel of John in the 14th chapter. John in chapter 14, and here's a passage I remember when I first, when I first heard this. It troubled me because I, th- I thought, how is it possible that we have such authority to make commands, to command something? And then I realized that God, through Jesus, had given us authority. Hello? I said, God, the Father, through Jesus Christ, has given us authority. And authority is, de- power is delegated authority when it comes to you and I. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he said, all power is given unto me. All power. Everybody say all power. power. Now that word is all authority. And then right after that, he says, go ye therefore, which means he has extended that authority to us. We don't have power. We have authority. God has the power. And that power is now delegated to us by means of authority. One of the words, when you start talking about authority, it's it's not very popular today because authority has been misused and abused and misunderstood. But God is in authority whether we like it or not. God, the Father God is not, he doesn't control this world, but he has this world under control. The Bible says the devil is is the prince of the power of the air, and he's the God of this world. But God, the Father, has this under control. He can't do whatever he wants to do. 
he has to get permission. Hello. And how does he get permission? He gets permission because we give him permission. And sometimes our permission, the permission is given through ignorance. When you don't know something, he said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Are you hearing me this morning? So we're in a place right now. As, now, I ask you to turn, well, John, so let's, let's look at the, the, the 14th chapter once again. And so, so we'd, we'd look at uh, verse, beginning in verse 12. Jesus is speaking. Now, this is red letters. All right? This is Jesus talking. Jesus himself is talking. So when, when you see red letters, pay attention. Now, I, we need to pay attention to every word that's in Scripture. But once you see these red letters, you know this is, this is vital. Give air to it. Now, watch this. He said, uh, he said, most assuredly, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Hallelujah. That's just the believers. That's not just the preachers. That's not the fivefold ministry. That's, how many of you are believers this morning? If you're a believer, he's talking to you. This is not limited to preachers and ministers of the gospel. This is, this is for every believer. If you're a believer, listen. Jesus said it. The works that I do will, he do, will he do also, and watch this, and greater works than these will he, will he do because I go to my Father. Greater works. Everybody say greater works. Greater. Say it again, greater works. And watch the next verse. He said, and whatever <laughs> you ask in my name, that I will do. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Well, that's some, that's some, you talk about a, a <laughs> you talk about an open check. He just gave us a check with his signature on it. And that's a blank check, which means you can fill in the blanks. A blank check. Whatever you ask, if you ask anything in my name. Now, now you remember, I, I was troubled with this because when I first heard it, and I did a little research and I found out that the word ask means to command. Now, I know you look at other translations and you go back into some of the Greek. It, it, you don't find it there, but you got to go back into the original manuscript that says that word ask means to command. He said, whatever, if you command anything in my name, I will do it. Just as Jesus talking. Command? Well, someone says, well, wait a minute, you're not supposed to command anything from the Lord. See, that's what I thought. Until the Lord showed me, you're not commanding anything from him. You're commanding it from the person who, <laughs> from the devil himself, or the situation that's contrary to what God says you should have. Which means to command you in authority. Only those that are in authority can, make, can, can, can command anything. But he says, if you command in my name, I will. So we saw a couple of examples. We went over to the book of Acts. And there was an example of, of Peter and John with that man at the gate beautiful. They didn't pray. He said, what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That was a command in his name. He didn't go to God. He didn't say, Father, in the, Father, would you do this in the name of Jesus? He said, no. What they said was, in the name of Jesus. That's the name of authority. That's the name that God himself gave when he raised him up and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And the Bible says he gave him a name that's above every name. So at that name, every knee must bow and every tongue confess. He said, a name above every name. 
principalities, powers, might, and dominion must bow to the authority of that name. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So I want you to think, just think for a moment. Here we have access. Now here's, here's, here's the part that I love. When you go, into, you go into the book of Ephesians, and it says that God has raised him up and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places and has placed all things under his feet and gave him. You're talking about Jesus now. And gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. And that's you and I. We are the body of Christ. And he is the head of this body. And if you're in the body, then everything is placed under your feet. Amen. Now I said, somebody says, well, I know. well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to understand, if we're in the body of Christ and, all, and the Father placed all things under his feet, that means it's under our feet. And that's why we've been given that level of authority that we don't have to ask God to do anything about the devil. Come on. Because he has already done it. He said that he raised us up together with him and seated us in heavenly places in Christ. That means we're, we're in a name that's above every name. That when we make a command, we're not commanding anything from God. Do you notice, do you recognize that when Peter and John, in fact, I want us just to go over there for a moment, the book of Acts. I don't know, man, I'm just, I'm just happy just talking about it. Acts in chapter 3, I want us to look at that again. I just, I just, I'm just so blessed when I read it. <clears throat> Dear Lord, you're going to get blessed too, just by knowing who you are. Amen. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what he has made you. Amen. What Christ has made you, what the Father has made you in Christ. Now, now, wait a minute. I, I want us to read it because it, me just saying it is one thing, but look at the, that uh, uh, sixth verse. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you, watch this, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Just keep in mind, he identify what Jesus he's talking about. Because yes. you know, in that day, there were other, others named Jesus. Same spelling. Even today, there are people by the name of Jesus. In fact, I understand in Spanish, it's Jesus. He's not talking about that Jesus. <laughs> are you listening to me? So there's a whole lot of Jesus, but he's not talking about that Jesus. He made sure that he identified which Jesus he's making a command through. What name is he commanding from? And so he said it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the one been born of a virgin birth. That's the one who, <laughs> that's the one who've been crucified, buried, and was resurrected, and all power belongs to him. Death has no power over him. He said, I got the keys of death and the grave, and all authority is given unto me both in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Are you listening to me? He said the Father has given him that name and placed everything under his feet. All authority both in this life and the life to come has been given to him. In heaven, in earth, and under the earth. He said in the name of Jesus. He never prayed. They never prayed to the Father. They just exercised their authority. Now, folks, if that's true for them, not because they're apostles, it's because they are believers. Are you hearing me? This is hard for so many of us to, to swallow. 
is just because they believe. Now watch. Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter. Mark in chapter 16. Oh, let's get busy. Mark in chapter 16. The gospel of Mark. Here's what he said. This is Jesus talking again. Oh, God help us. Chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Watch this. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, and these signs, everybody say signs. signs, and these signs will follow those who believe. He didn't say to follow the preachers or the pastors or the evangelists or the teachers. He said it will follow those who believe. Watch this. In my name, they will cast out devils. <laughs> what name? The name of Jesus. In my name, they will. They will cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And if they had drink any deadly thing or anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands. They is who? They, they who? They the believe. The one that believe. Yes. They who? <laughs> they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is a mess. This is Jesus talking. Oh, it's time that we get a hold and take a hold of what Jesus said we are. And quit just religiously making a comment about it, but believe it because he said these signs will follow them that believe. We ought to expect that when we use that name, that things must happen because we are in relationship. He, call, he doesn't call us, listen, he don't call us servants anymore. He calls us friends and he says we are brethren. So when we, you, we have authority to use that name, Jesus said, he said, go ye therefore, go. Everybody say go. Go into all the world. And the ones that believe, they'll cast out demons, they lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is an hour in which the believers need to rise up and start declaring who you are in Christ. We need to get so bold about this. If somebody says, well, I did it and nothing happened. That is not your problem. <laughs> it has to do with God. You do what he tells you to do and God will do what he says he will do. So we have access to that name because we are members of his body. The body don't go anywhere. The head doesn't go. The body can't do anything that the head didn't instruct. When you move your arms, it's because your head told you to do it. When you walk, it's because your head told you to walk. Take your head away, you're not going anywhere, and you're not doing anything. He said, these signs will follow them who believe. So don't relegate that instructions just to the, 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 the clergy or the preachers or the pastors. No, it's for everybody, for all of us. He said, them who believe, they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They would lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, do it. This is not instructions that came from pastor or bishop. This instruction that came from the head, the head of the church, which as you and I, we're the church. And we're his body. They now, now, I want you to notice, he didn't say pray to the Father. 
He says, in my name, you will cast out devil. In my name. There is no, there's no prayer here. Peter and John didn't even pray. They knew the authority they had in his name. So when they did that, now I want you to go back to Acts quickly. After this man has been raised up, go back to the second chapter. After he's been raised up, the people were so amazed. They've never seen anything like that coming from a man. They knew that it came from Jesus, the miracles and signs and wonders. But here is an, here's an, an ordinary man, Peter, John, ordinary, nothing special about them. They, the Bible says that they were so amazed. If you look in the 12th, go back to Acts chapter 3, verse 12. <clears throat> no, let's just back up verse 11. It said, now is the lame man who, had, who was healed held on to Peter and John. Well, you could see why, right? He's sitting there all these years. You could see why he's holding on to him. And he, 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 even he couldn't understand what happened to him. He thought they did it. Now watch this. They held on to Peter and John, and all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people. Man of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man to walk? Huh? Jump down to verse 16. He says, and his name through faith in his name, had made this man strong. <laughs> Amen. It ain't us. It's our faith in that name that made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of all of you. <laughs> Amen. Of you all. It's our faith in his name. It's not faith in how much you know and how well you know the scriptures. It's not faith in whether you can articulate the scriptures or you can preach real well and teach well and sing well. It's not faith in what you, is your ability, but it's, in, it's faith in that name. He said, had made that man whole. Faith in that name. That's why without, without it, you can't please God. You can't please God without it. Faith in that name. Now, you see, see, <laughs> what's interesting about this is that they knew where this power... Now, now, see, go back, go back once again. He, he, notice what he said. You think it's by our power. Everybody say our power. Look at verse 12. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we made this man to walk? The power came from God. Amen. The authority to use that power came from them. Amen. Are you hearing me? The power came from God, but the authority to exercise that power comes from us. Because we don't have the power to do anything. When we understand when Jesus said, all power is given unto me, when he says, I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy. Jesus said it. I gave you authority over all the powers of the enemy. I say it again. Jesus said it. I gave you power, authority over all the power of the enemy. It is the same. Here's the example I gave it before. 
It is the same level of authority that a policeman has. He got the, that, that policeman or policewoman got that authority from the powers that be. Did you get that? It's the same principle. So if he stands or she stands there in uniform and raises his hand when traffic is going, everybody stops. Why? Because of his authority. He doesn't have the power to stop that car. That's 6,000 pounds. He don't have don't, the power to stop that vehicle. Why do you and I stop? Why do we stop when we know he can't stop us? If we intend to drive through, <laughs> there is nothing he or she can do. That matched, didn't it? That rhymed. That rhymed, didn't it? If we decide to drive through, <laughs> there is nothing that man or woman could do. Write that down. That'll go. That'll fly. Now, I want you to think about it. There's nothing, there's nothing that police officer can do. But then why do we stop? We stop because we recognize authority. And authority commands us. That authority didn't suggest anything. When God gave the Ten Commandments, when he gave the command, this is not ten suggestions. When Jesus gives a command, he's the Lord of hosts. When he gives a command, he's not suggesting anything. The police officer is not suggesting you stop. He's commanding you to stop just by raising his hands. And what happens if you don't? You have to deal with the powers that be. So we know there's power behind that authority. We know all of that government is behind that authority. That when you break that authority, when you violate that authority, then the power goes into effect. That's exactly what the devil knows. When you and I use that name, he knows exactly where that authority is coming from. Not because you said it, because you believe it. Because these signs will follow them that believe. You say it like because you're repeating it, because somebody else says it, it doesn't work. That's why it hasn't been working. You're just repeating what the preacher says. But when you got this authority and you understand this is who you are, this is what God has placed in me as one that's in authority in this life. He says you will reign in life by Christ Jesus. Thank God we don't have to worry about whether we've got this or we've got that or power. No, we know that when we stand, we stand in the authority that have been delegated to us by the powers that be. And when the devil hears that name, now you want, no, wait, wait, you're not, he's, you're not commanding God to do anything. That cripple man is not, was not God that put it on him. Jesus went about <laughs> defeating all the works of the devil, casting out devils, healing the sick. That means it wasn't God making them sick. It wasn't God that caused a devil to possess them. So that means we're not commanding God to do anything. We are commanding that situation to change. In his name. I know this was tough for me to grasp. I remember the first time I heard it. It took a while for me to understand. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then I realized Jesus is saying, he didn't say pray to God about speaking in tongues, pray to God about casting out devils and healing the sick. He said, no, you do this in my name. 
And we talked about the seven sons of Sceva. And that, the chief priests of that day attempted to use the name without authority. And that's what will happen to you. If you attempt to use that name without authority. We adjure you. We adjure you. Now, now, wait a minute. The King James says, we command you. They were trying to command something that they had no authority to command. We command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. It better be in the name who you preach because the command is coming from you. The devil knew the difference. That spirit that possessed <laughs> that man knew that they didn't know what they were talking about. Knew that they were fake. Knew that they were pretenders. Because he said, I don't know you. Are you listening to me? They said, they said, Paul we know, Jesus we know, but who are you? Now listen. They understand rank. They know who is ranked and who's not. Only when you have rank, you could command. Now, you, some of you didn't get that. Even when you're in the military, those that give command are those who outrank you. Is that true, Pastor? See, you don't get command from the private or the recruit. You get it from those who outrank you. Now, here's this, here are this chief priest, which is supposed to be the religious leader of that day. He's trying to command something that he didn't have the authority, neither did he have the rank. Because first of all, he never accepted and received Jesus as who he said he was. He's still stuck in the Old Testament under the Mosaic law, and he didn't realize here's a new law being established by the person himself, which is God, in the person of Jesus. So he attempted to be a fake by using that name without authority, and he didn't have the rank. And guess what? The devil knew it. So you can't fake the devil out. Oh, he's been around too long. That's why he says, I know Paul. I know Jesus, but I don't know you. You have no rank here. You can't command me to do anything. Because I don't understand you don't have any rank whatsoever. I know them, but I don't know you. And I'll show you who's the boss. <laughs> and the Bible says the spirit of that man jumped on all of them, seven or at least eight of them, and just beat the life out of them. Stripped off their clothes. The Bible said they went bleeding, torn their clothes off because they didn't understand and the devil knew the difference. Don't you think? You can't hide and pretend to be something that you're not. Because you, you and I will be able to fool others by our language, by our, our words. But you can't fool God nor the devil because he knew. He knows who you are. And if you're a phony, he knows it. So don't you dare try to use that name if you don't know who you are. And you don't have a relationship with this person called Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> Not just any Jesus. This is talking about Jesus of Nazareth. If you don't have it, he knows it. You know, that's why Christians get in trouble. Because they, they try to act like the preachers act, try to act like those who know Christ. And you see, you can fool them. But behind closed doors, the devil knows who you are. 
and you can't fool him, he'll say the same thing to you. I don't know you. You have no rank here in this place of darkness. And how dare you command me? Watch what I'm going to do. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do. I want you to think about that for a moment. And when we talk about you see, even angels understand rank. And the devil understand rank. Did you know that? He was called the anointed cherub, which means he outranked all of the angels. He was one that when God created the Satan himself, he was called the anointed cherub. That means he was one of the protective angels that protected the glory of God and the, and the throne of God. Did you know that's what the cherub does? Huh? They're over the mercy seat, which is in heaven, and they protect the, the presence of God. You say, but God need protection? God set it up that way. He don't need protection, but that's how God set it up. And he sets it up in rank. Cherubs. Seraphims. Archangels. Angels. All rank. All ranked. There's rank. And so he, the Bible says principalities, powers, huh? Dominion and might. Uh, uh, principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness. These are all ranks. The devil set up his kingdom like God's has his already set up. That's why he understands rank. You know, there's a place that we've read before in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter where he talks about the head covering of the woman, that she should keep her head covered because of the angels, because they respect order and they recognize rank. You see? They, they, they understand. So the devil used the same system. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, and on and on. Okay? See, that, that's where our fight is. Now, in case, you, you don't, you, in case you, you're ignorant to this, I hope you're not, you and I are in a continual warfare that never ends until you leave this planet. This is not a warfare with sister so-and-so or uncle so-and-so or this. A warfare among those who don't like you and you don't like and your physical enemies. This is a warfare that is spiritual. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? See, when Jesus says, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, this was literal. This is a twofold revelation. It's not only literal, but that was an example of spiritual warfare. And that's another message altogether, but I, we're going to talk about that as we deal in the subject. Okay? But here it is, he says, that we, 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 who we are, we're soldiers, whether you like it or not. All right? Let me help you. First, go to 2 Timothy for a moment. 2 Timothy in chapter 2. See, some folks don't like to hear this because they say, no, I don't want to be in the military. <laughs> I'm not a soldier. A preacher might be, but I'm not. Well, the moment you accept Jesus, you've been enlisted. Amen. Oh, boy. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. You've been enlisted whether you like it or not. <clears throat> now, what? 2 Timothy chapter 2, let's, we might as well begin in... Um, Let's begin in verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son. Now, now, keep, now wait, hold on. Paul is writing to his son. That's his spiritual son, Timothy. He said he's like a son to me in, the, in serving in the gospel. He said, I trust Timothy more than anyone. In fact, Paul literally said that. I'm paraphrasing. He said, I, I'm sending him to you because I know he cared for you, not like others who care for themselves. Okay. So he had such trust in Timothy. Now he's instructing Timothy, and he says, You therefore, my son, 
Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Look this, watch. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, that's you know, the stuff people talk about me, the good things, among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Verse 3. But you, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. This is not just relegated to Timothy. He says you endure what? Hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, now, you see, when, when, when Paul write these things, when he was writing, in fact, there's another place we'll, we'll talk about in just a moment, but here's Paul giving him instructions how he, sh how he should posture himself during difficult times and hard times. He says you endure. Everybody say endure. endure. Do you know that's the word that described those who will win the crown that Jesus talked about at the end of it all? You know, the only thing Jesus said... He said, when I come back, will I find faith in the earth? He didn't say, will I find Christians? Will I find believers? Will I find the righteous? Will I find faith in the earth? Faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Now, now watch. Watch this. He said, you therefore, you must. Everybody say must. Must, must endure hardship as a good soldier of who? Of Jesus Christ. Okay, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? So that he may please him who has enlisted him as a soldier. Oh, wait, wait. Ooh, do you think that's just for Timothy? No, he's instructing Timothy how he needs to lead this people. And these are the kind of instructions that is, that is for every single one of us. Endure. You notice Jesus often you hear, he that endured to the end. He that endured to the end. He that endured to the end. It's about endurance. As a believer, will I find faith in the earth when I return? The devil desired to sift you, Peter, as wheat, but I pray that your faith doesn't fail. When I come back, that's what I'm, I want to know. Will I find faith? It's about endurance. Your faith has to endure through the hard times and the difficult times. He said, as a good soldier. Well, I'm not a soldier. Yes, you are. He said, but you have to be what? Faithful. This, I, could, I could stay here for the next hour because there's so much in this passage, this verse right here. But let me, let, me, let me say, he said, you don't entangle yourself. In fact, uh, would, you, would you put that up in the NLT, uh, uh, verse 4, in the NLT. NLT verse 4. Soldiers don't get tied up <laughs> in the affairs of civilian life. For then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. Who do you think that officer is? Who do you think the officer is? He's talking about the one Jesus of Nazareth, not Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. Just leave that up there. That they cannot please. He said when you get involved and you get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, you cannot please the officer who enlisted you. Now, this goes back to rank. If you've been in the military, like I have and Pastor and many others here, military people, you know that when you are enlisted, that doesn't make you a soldier. Wait a minute. You didn't catch that, did you? Being enlisted, you're not a soldier because you've been enlisted. Why is it so quiet? You should have better amen than that. Somebody said, what does that mean? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What does that mean? 
See, I remember when I went into the Marine Corps, okay, back in 1974. I remember when they drove us onto Paris Island. That's an island where you can't get off until you're done. I was told that when I get there, I would be in a different world. I was told when I get there, I am no longer belong to myself. I am now owned <laughs> by the Marine Corps. They make sure that you get humbled by shaving your hair off your head. If you think you look pretty before you went in, and, you, and so I went in with an afro. See, I thought I'd keep my afro, man. I was, you know, Mr. Cool, right? I got there, and they says, okay, we'll show you. We'll show you. You like that? In fact, that's what one guy said when I got to the place where they shave your head off. He said, do you like that? Do you like the way you look, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> you like that, huh? Well, sit there for a moment. <laughs> take it all off. Just take everything off. You, you, you hate it, but listen, the moment you sign, you get enlisted, you're not a soldier yet. I was called a sweet pea. <laughs> I was called a civilian maggot. Jill instructor, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's some things I can't say here in the pulpit, especially being live. I can't tell you what they called me. Everything except, that's right. You are a civilian, you're nobody. And here your, your favorite color is green. You can't decide what color you put on. You can't tell them that my favorite color. No, your favorite. They tell you who you are. Just like when you get in the kingdom, God tells you who you are. The only problem is most of us don't want to accept it. I don't care whether you like it or not, every one of you. I don't care who you are. If you say, I'm a child of God, I've been born again, you are a... <laughs> You have been enlisted to be a soldier. So when I got there, they told me that you are not a soldier. You're not a Marine until they trained you to become one. So being enlisted don't make you one. Now, now, now you understand. That's why I've had better amens right now. See, just because you've been enlisted, you got to be taught and trained and be disciplined so that you can become a soldier. See, in the kingdom of God, you become a believer. That's where you get enlisted. But from a believer to a disciple, there is a training period that makes you a disciple. Disciples are not born. Disciples are made. And when you become a disciple, that's when you have rank. Ah, uh, you understand? See, because he said, believers, you remember in John chapter 8, it says, uh, Jesus said, if you believe in me, he said, that, no, uh, I, it just came to me. Just, can, you, can, you, can you hold your place? Let's go to John's gospel. Am I helping you this morning? Amen. Just go to John's gospel. Now, it just came in my spirit. John chapter 8. You know, that's how the Holy Ghost does it. Let's see if we find it. Oh, yes. John chapter 8. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Look at the 31st verse. John chapter 8, verse 31. He said, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. Stop. Everybody, whoa, 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 whoa. look up here. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. Were they believers? Who is he talking to? Jews that believed him. So you can't question whether they were believers or not. He said Jews that believed. They were believers. Everybody say believers. believers. They were believers. And now Jesus is talking to the believers. He said to those Jews who believed him, if 
You abide in my word. You are my disciples indeed. Ah, some of you didn't get that. In other words, you're not a disciple yet. You've just been enlisted. So to become a disciple, if you abide in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. That means if you live in it. Oh boy. Then are you my disciples indeed. That means believers are not disciples. Believers are born. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. So disciples are not born, they are made. Which means it takes time for you to rank up. By how much of the word you allow to abide in you. In other words, he's saying, you get a hold of my word until my word gets a hold of you. When my word gets a hold of you, he says, then you are my disciples indeed. And that's when you will know the truth. And the, it says it right there, doesn't it? He says, watch this, and you shall know the truth. He's not talking to believers at that point. He says, you be my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. After you become a disciple, and the truth shall do what? Shall make you free. The truth won't set you free. It will make you free. That's the difference between a recruit <laughs> an enlisted person, come on, and a person with rank. You will do what? You'll know the truth. Disciples is who know the truth. Believers repeat truth. See, you got a lot of believers. We repeat, they repeat what the preachers say. Repeat what, what, what they heard on television, what they heard. But when you become a disciple, you're not repeating what they say. Listen, listen, child of God. You can steal information, but you can't steal revelation. You understand? You can take what I say and go repeat it. But if it's not a revelation to you, it doesn't have the level of impact that it should have when you start speaking it. Because that's why he says abide. That word means to live. It means to take up residence in my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. And then you will know the truth. Not just repeat it, but will know it. And the truth you know is what makes you free. People say, set you free. Not true. Jesus never said you'll be set free by the truth you know. That's like somebody that got caught and went to prison. If you set a person free out of prison, it won't be long till they will be in prison again. 80, 90% of prisoners are repeated offenders because they've been set free, which means they didn't learn anything. It's why they go right back into prison. That's what happens when you set somebody free. But when you make somebody free, you taught them how not to be in prison again. Give them a fish. You'll have to do it over and over again. Teach them how to fish. They don't have to be taught anymore. They know how to catch it for themselves. So that's how you make a disciple. Go and make disciples. They're made. Believers are born. Disciples are made. That's why when you see a believer confessing what you confess as a disciple and nothing happens to them, they're making declarations. And they're praying in the name of Jesus, nothing is happening. Because they're just repeating what they heard. But when you become a disciple, when you make a declaration, it comes out of your spirit because you got that word living in you. 
And the Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You're not just talking because of what you heard. You're talking about, you're talking because of what's live on the inside of you. What the abundance of that word inside of you, it must come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're listening to people that are cussing and fussing and complaining and murmuring, you get in trouble, that's the first thing that's going to come out of your mouth. Find yourself doing some work and you make a mistake and hit yourself. What comes out of your mouth tell you who, what, what's in you in abundance. If a cuss word comes out, that's what you've been listening to. That's what you've been giving yourself to. But if Jesus comes out... <laughs> Oh, Jesus! You know before you've been saved, before you got saved, B.C., you won't say Jesus, you said something else. Come on. See, that's, that's the difference between a, a, a believer and a disciple. So now, see, this is, what, this is what we're talking about. You have to be ranked to be able to speak with authority. When I'm ranked, the devil knows who you are. Did you get that? He knows who you are. So here's, here's uh, 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 Paul saying to Timothy, he said, but you therefore <laughs> must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Well, you say I'm not a soldier? Yes, you are. You can't say, I'm, well, I, well, I don't want to be. I don't want to be a soldier. So you can just roll over and play dead. You think the devil will leave you alone? Now nah, he knows you're not dead. Roll over and play dead. You think he'll leave you? No, no. Oh, don't work that way. I said it don't work that way. As a good soldier. He said, and, and I like that again. No one entangles himself. Did he, did he put that back up? No one entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has enlisted him as a soldier. How do you please him if you've been enlisted? He that abides in my word, that's how you please him. It, how, how can you say you love me and don't keep my word? If you abide in me and my words abides in you, you shall ask what you will. We're not talking about the prayer that Jesus taught in the 16th chapter of John, where he says, after a while, until now you've asked nothing in my name, he says, but, but then you will ask anything you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. That's, that's prayer. Are you hearing me? That's when you're praying for things. But there's some things you don't have to pray for. There's some things you have to command, especially if the devil has his hand on it. Sickness, disease, all of the elements that's, that, that Jesus already provided for, you don't have to pray about it. We don't have to pray about it anymore. Are you hearing me? Everything that he provided for, we don't have to pray about, but we have to command it. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose, that means whatever you permit, heaven permits. Whatever you forbid, that's bind, heaven binds. He didn't say to pray. He didn't say to pray. He just says whatever you do. Now, there's some things that we don't know, and so that we need to ask the Father in Jesus' name. That's when we're praying. We're making petitions, supplications, prayers, intercession to the Father. Nowhere it says that we pray to Jesus or pray to the Holy Spirit. He says pray to the Father in my name. Amen. Amen. So you are enlisted to become a soldier. And that's what they told me. It says you're a maggot. <laughs> you are civilian scum. 
You're not worth anything. And by the time you leave here, you will become a Marine. So you had to go through three phases of intense training. I went in 74 uh, being prepared for Vietnam. And so I had four months of intense training. Three months in Paris Island, and then the other month in, in, in California, uh, hot weather training. Intense. Camp Wilson used to be an Air Force base. <clears throat> Getting ready for, for uh, go to Vietnam. After the third phase, that's when you start getting your rank as a soldier. No bars, just a soldier. Until then, ah, you're a civilian. <laughs> Some words I can't repeat again. Huh? Same is true, the same principle is true in the kingdom of God. You come in and you give yourself to be trained, to be taught. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna endure some hardship. You're going to endure some difficulties in life. He says, endure hardship as a good soldier. You're going to endure some setbacks, some undermining, some lies told about you, huh? accusations, persecutions. They that are in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Now, Living, see, you just think about it. A disciple is one who is disciplined. That's where we get discipline from. We get discipline from discipleship. Discipleship, discipline, disciple. It's a disciplined person. That means you've got to give yourself to the Word of God, study, read, meditate. You can't wait till you get to church to learn these things. You can't wait till you get to the house or call pastor or call someone to tell you about this. you got to do it yourself. If you want to become a disciple so that you'll know the truth and become free from all these attacks against your life, you have to do it yourself. You can be carried for a while when you're enlisted, but after a while you're expected to be one to use your authority. Huh? So I'm enlisted, so think about it. I'm enlisted. But now I became a soldier. I became a soldier because I was trained and taught and disciplined. Living a life of discipline doesn't make you rigid. It makes you resilient. You hear me? That's what a disciple is, this resilient. That means you get knocked down, you get up. You get knocked down, you get up. You get knocked down, you get up. The righteous falls seven times, but he gets up again. You never stay down. That's resilience. <clears throat> and that means when you talk about resilience, that's capable of withstanding a shock without permanent damage. <clears throat> Keep getting up. Keep getting up. That's what discipline does. Living a life of discipline is about resiliency. It's about being resilient, not about being rigid. Amen. So we all call, we're all called to that place. And you cannot say, I don't want to be a soldier. Kate, Kate, listen, I, I can give you at least four or five scriptures out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Everything is established. He talks about fight the good fight of faith, for example. We wrestle not again. That's all conflict. <laughs> Amen. We wrestle not again. That's conflict. Fight the good. That's conflict. That's fight. Warfare, the weapons of your, you got weapons and there's a warfare going on. You think the devil cares whether you believe it or not? In fact, he does care whether you believe it because he knows he's in trouble when you start believing because these signs will follow them that believe. So what do you think he's going to take advantage if you don't know it? 
If you don't know who you are, he will constantly take advantage of you. Because ignorance will destroy you. And he will sneak in just like a, just like a, he sneaks in and does stuff that you, that you unaware until it's too late. That's how he does. And he doesn't care whether it's you, your children, your babies, whatever. He'll hurt you and kill you, your babies, your children, just like he has no mercy when it comes to that. And so we need to know what our authority is, and we need to know who we are in Christ. We, we didn't make ourselves that. He made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No, we always emphasize, right, in Christ, of Christ, through Christ. Got to keep that in place. You're not there by yourself. If you are, you can't stay there because the devil will bump you off. But if you're there in Christ, he doesn't know the difference. And the church said amen. amen. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Give God some praise. Thank him for his word. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I need you. We gotta give thanks always. And keep in mind we've been favored, blessed, and favored of God. And you gotta remember that He chose us. We didn't choose Him. He called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And so we, we, I, I thank those that have joined us this morning. We gave you a little history of what we taught last week. And this week we'll continue teaching on the same subject of being a soldier of Jesus Christ. Soldiers of the cross, that's what we are. Start to act like it. Walk like it. You start talking, I'm a soldier. I'm a so if, you've been, if you've been saved more than three years, you're a soldier. It don't take three years of training. <laughs> It doesn't take three years of training, and still, you're still an enlisted recruit. You're a soldier. If you've been saved for three years, you've got to see yourself. The devil, is, he's, not going, he's going to be relentless against you. So once again, we thank those that have joined us, and we ask you, you pray for us as we pray for you. And we personally, I personally invite you to become a part of the congregation and become a part of this service. And you are absolutely welcome. We've got plenty of room. We observe the, the, the CDC instructions, distancing ourselves. And so we, we're going to continue to worship God together. We're going to make demands. I said make demands. Kingdom of darkness. Because the Bible says we've been brought out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of love, kingdom of his dear son. Amen. So once again, thank you for joining us. We salute you. We pray for you. We believe that God will continue to use the words that you've heard this morning to become a doer and not just hearing it, but act on it. Let that word live in you and you'll become that soldier that Jesus have chosen Become the soldier that win wars. Amen. Because he's called you to be a winner, not a loser. He said, we're the head and not the tail, above only and not the knee. Amen. So once again, thank you for joining us. Everybody, let's say thank you to those that have joined us. And invite them to become a part of the service. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord.